Hey yo, what's happening everybody? Of course, it's your host Young Brinky. You're tuning in to the number one music and entertainment TV show in Memphis and the Mid-South, Brink TV. Now right now we got a couple new faces to the Brink TV show, but old homies for me. I'm talking about the homie DJ Lil One and Draper J. What's going on with y'all, man? Happy to be here. What about you, Big Homie? Yeah, same here. What up, what up, what up with you? Most deaf, most deaf, most deaf. Now, of course, we got a lot to talk about on tonight's episode, but of course, you're a familiar face. You know what I mean? People have seen you, been seeing you for years. Let's talk about your start in the music industry. You began doing music, of course, but a lot of people may know you. You was Yo Gotti's Road DJ, right? Right, right, right. Uh, I've been around for a minute, man, doing a lot of things in the music industry, not just DJing, but writing, producing, all kinds of things. Anything you can think of, I done did it. Most definitely, most definitely. Let's go ahead and talk about how did you get your start in the industry? Man, I was uh, DJing a, a high school battle of the bands, and uh, a promoter, a club promoter just came up like, man, I need, a, I need a DJ for the night. But I didn't really have no real equipment. I was just DJing the battle of the bands or whatever, right? So I like I got a couple CDs I can DJ it. So I went the next weekend and uh, DJ the club, rocked it and it took off from there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you definitely was doing a lot of parties with the homie Sean Gun, right? Like from the Sean Gun experience, like what was your one of your most memorable moments from that whole experience? Man, I think when they had a step show one time, and I think Pastor Troy, Lil White, and Yo Gotti was performing, and it it was like a ton eight outside. But the music was hitting so hard, people thought it was the music, but they didn't know there was a tornado going on outside. We were just in the middle of it, having a good time. Most that was that was real memorable to me. Yeah, and and from there, like you did mention Yo Gotti, what was one of your most memorable moments on the road with the big homie? Because you was rocking with him for a good minute, man. Uh, just one time, I think he had a he had a cousin on the road with us, and uh, he 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 be in and out, so he don't really know people in the industry like we do. So he thought another chick. Uh, he went to one of the homies' phone, and it was a chick in there named Auntie. He thought Auntie was a chick that uh they used to, you know, kind of pass around a little bit. And notice I did say they. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but whatever uh, it happened, he called her about three or four in the morning. We in Atlanta, and it just so happened to be Walker Mama, Auntie Deb. Yeah, it was Auntie Deb, and not who he thought it was. And she gave him a good roast, and then he hung that phone up with the bed. That's it. <laughs> Right. So, cause about it at that time of the morning, they need to go get to bed. Believe that, believe that, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, let's go ahead and talk about the brand new single, Paradise. You know, it is on iTunes right now, right? Right. It's on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all your uh, major music outlets right now. Believe that. Now, let's talk about the inspiration behind the single Paradise. Because when I hear it, you know, I'm thinking about the sunny skies. I'm talking about palm trees. I'm talking about beautiful women. What does that song mean to you? That mean everything you just said, right? Like, I like to vacation and travel a lot. So, uh, that's what I had in vision when I heard the beat. That just made me feel like paradise. You know, I, like I said, I live a paradise lifestyle. So, I just felt that in my heart like this is what this song is telling me to talk about it. and uh wrote the song wrote the hook and it came out perfect let's go ahead because we will be premiering that video on tonight's episode but go ahead tell the people uh who directed uh my guy named dennis bird down in pensacola florida uh he do real good work great quality good guy to work with most definitely most definitely now i understand that late this fall we gonna be seeing yolo right yolo the mixtape is on the way late this fall stay tuned yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the in-house features you got on there as well as the production. Like who who should we be expecting on this project? Uh, of course you can expect my guy Tino Montana, he on there, uh my little guy, uh my young homie King Memphis, he on there, and uh, I also got a feature from Schoolboy. So that's that's the main features on it right now though. Believe it. Yeah, see real. Yeah, see real on that on that on that club banger called Bang. Be on the lookout for that one. That's gonna be a real club slam of that. And they'll be able to find it on like Spinrilla, that pill, live mixtapes, all of it. All, like I said, the major channels that you can download, stuff like iTunes, stuff like that. So we're going to make sure it's all, we, we're going to make sure you don't have a problem getting it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have no problem, you should have no problem downloading or getting it and being able to listen to it. Like I said, we also going to beat the streets up. So be on the lookout for us out there, passing around the CDs. We're going to make sure we get it circulated. So. Be on the lookout. That's all that I can say. Now, Draper Jack, I gotta want, I gotta ask you, man. I want to know, like, you've been rocking with DJ Loom for a good amount of time. Like, when you first met him, like, what is it that you saw in him that you was like, okay, this is the guy I need to be on the team with. We need to be working with. We need to be getting this money. What did you see when you first met him? I go back way further than that. I mean, cause we came up as kids together. You know what I'm saying? So he basically like my little brother. So 
like I said, when he started DJing, anything, I'm like I said, I'm the type of person that if somebody's trying to do something, I want to try to learn it too. So when he started DJing, I picked up on it too, you know what I'm saying? So I used to go to the Sean Gun party with him, help DJ. But then, like I said, he took it to a whole nother level. So, you know, and he always been a cat that's a thinker. So you always supposed to, you know, surround yourself with like minded people who's always trying to work and do something better. So when we, once we started out with SOS back in the day, we, uh, you know, that's what I wanted to. I want to kind of mess with this music thing, cause I mean, he made he made it feel so believable that we can go somewhere with it. So from SOS, now we G House. So you know what I'm saying? That that that's how it was. So that, I'm I'm riding with him to the end. So any vision he has, I'm down for it. That's gonna put it in motion. Believe that, believe that. Now, while we talking about putting it in motion, how do you feel about the current state of Memphis hip hop music, man? You feel like we on point, or we still lacking? We behind what? Um, man, I just feel like it's, it's just not enough leaders in the game here right now. Uh, just got a lot of people following trends and stuff. You know, uh, people call themselves bosses, but you run around doing the same thing everybody else doing. You know, you're not standing out at all. But, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a few cats that got some good music that I do listen to and I will su su continue to support. But, uh, I mean, just for you, the newer guys just, that's just starting or whatever, like they just following the trend saying, hey, uh, this guy got on doing this, so let me do it. So that, that, that ain't the way I rock and uh we don't really follow trends. We do we do us and uh we live that paradise lifestyle. Yeah. Most definitely, most definitely. Now one thing I do understand is like I said, with you being a DJ first, you know, or prior, you know, and having or basically having a DJ background and being an artist, what advice would you have for artists out there? That's aspiring to, you know, make it, trying to blow up, trying to get a major deal, whatever, what have you. And they trying to, I guess, build relationships up with DJs. But, you know, some of the DJs, I ain't even just go leave it local, but some of the DJs might have ego, might be kind of Hollywood. Like, how do they break that ice? Uh, well, like you said, it, it ain't just Memphis DJs. There's a, there's a lot of DJs had their egos. And uh, like I said before, just like. Don't try to talk to a DJ in the club while he's working. That's the first rule. You know, you don't want to do that. It's not a good time to talk business. You know what I'm saying? But if you're trying to buy him a drink, uh, you know, and get his attention, that's different. But as far as talking about your music, trying to get to know you, telling your life story, that ain't the time to do it. So, <laughs> so you know, y'all just need to exchange contacts and get together on a later date and, and let them hear your music and see what y'all can do. With you having a DJ background, like, are other DJs receptive to your music or do they treat you like... Like, you know, how a lot of DJs treat our heart, oh, you go another rapper, you know, how, 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 how does it happen for you? Like, how does it happen? Well, I'm, I'm getting the same treatment as an artist, so I, I, I feel the pain, and I know where y'all coming from with it. But, uh, you know, it's just it's just all about who grind. You got to keep grinding and keep putting it in their face until they open up to you. And uh, that's what we're doing right now. So we're just going to keep putting it in their face and letting them hear it. It's going to eventually pop. So, you know, I understand that, and I understand the grind. So that's why we continue to do it. And, and as, as we go around trying to circulate the music, like I said, we we getting that mix that mix vibe right now, but like I said, I I, I got a feeling we just keep on just going at it with it. Then eventually they gonna be hitting us up. We ain't gonna have to go to the club and find them. So like I said, we got different social media sites they can reach out to us on. So we just gonna keep stay stay our due diligence and do a, do what we need to do as far as uh, the music industry. Go ahead, and give me social media that way they keep up with you. Uh, I only have uh, Facebook Draper Jackson. Draper Jackson and uh you can get at us at also on the G House Entertainment 2.0 page. Most definitely. What about you, Big Dog? Hey, my uh social media is OJ Lil One on Facebook, OG Lil One on Snapchat, and DJ Lil One on Instagram. Now I also understand that you got a show coming up, right? Yeah, October 16th, meet me at Pure Passion, Memphis. Pure Passion, October 16th. That's a Sunday night. It's going down. Believe that, believe that. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce your video. Hey, here's my video, DJ Lil One, Paradise. Check it out. 